Hey guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Easy Aster Images channel, and we are going to play with some photons tonight. Welcome back here to our little astrophotography channel. So tonight I'm actually collecting data on the second night of the Veil Nebula. So we'll be able to get that full frame with the Red Cat 51 and all the trimmings that I have on there. No Canadian wildfire smoke or anything like that. We've had a few clear nights this week finally after such a long stretch so currently got about four and a half hours of data just you know this is the reason why you get the red cat so you can have just this big old stuff 2600 mc pro sensor and i am trying out the new well it's not new but new to me again antlia lpt duo narrow band filter so i got some more tighter band passes than i had with the Itis NBZ, which worked really great, but it's a little bit wider and this should block out a little bit more of that excess stuff, maybe reduce like background color noise, the kind of stuff like that. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. So just been playing with the data a little bit here, using, uh, playing around with some of Bill Blanchon's new uh, scripts that he has out and things are going pretty good. So this is night one data. Night two did not work out so well because I was doing my polar alignment and Nina. And while I was doing my polar alignment, my dog got sprayed by a skunk outside. So that pretty much ruined that night. So now we're literally on night three slash night two and got everything all set up here. AM5 is just guiding. It's just doing its thing. What else can you say about the AM5? It's just been rock solid for me just absolutely loving it now that all the bugs have been worked out on it we've got nina sequence here going on and what i'm going to do tonight actually is i'm going to actually shoot for about an hour with uh just a regular rgb filter could have used the uv but whatever and i am going to capture uh some true colored stars or close to true colors and then we'll spend the rest of the night shooting on the actual vel nebula and then the whole point is to going to be to add all that data together add in the color stars to make it a little bit more prettier now the coolest thing i'll show you here of course is the deep space dad deep sky dad flat panel you can see i've got this stuff listed here at the end of my sequence to close the flat panel cover shoot my flat shoot my dark flats with my trained exposure times switch filters and do the same thing again there's also a rotating feature built in here because i'm using their rotator now too and it's been flawless so i cannot say enough about his products and his customer service, even though he is all the way over in Croatia, I accidentally broke like a micro USB connector off um, to my flat panel and was very, very sad panda. And the guy literally sent me a new board for free like a week or two later. And once he sends something out, DHL literally gets it here in like two days. So it's pretty freaking fantastic. I've done a review on that. You can look back on the channel with the flat panel. Like if you own any kind of refractor or anything that he makes that he can fit a flat panel to, man, I totally, totally recommend it. The rotator has been working pretty well. Um, took a little bit of tweaking and adjustment to like get the belts and stuff kind of the right tension where it didn't get bound up and everything, especially trying to tilt uh, rotate the big eight inch filter wheel, um, not eight inch, but eight piece, two inch filter wheel. Um, even though it's only got like four or five filters in it, you know, it's a pretty big, heavy load. So if you're not using like a big filter wheel, you shouldn't have any problems at all. I've worked out all the problems just again, by doing some tension adjustments and stuff in there, retightening on the little pinions that he have in there for the, for the gears and the transmission. And it's been beautiful. So basically I have this thing set up uh, to, you know, we're not going to be able to start shooting here. Usually wait for things to kind of get up a little bit higher. So at about 11, uh, 35, 11 40 PM tonight, um, the sequence is going to go ahead and run and it, it's going to do an hour of the RGB and then it should collect all of my data. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop my guiding because I just did my guiding calibration and then I'm just going to uh, pull up 
the ASI mount and it will send it home and we'll just let it sit there and we'll hit play on the Nina sequence and then it should be ready to go. Got everything hooked up running through the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advanced version two so we've got do control we've got dependable usb3 hubs and stuff because when you start using all of these extra peripherals um, your mini pcs are going to run out of hubs real quick and i've just had nothing but bad luck with the little powered hub things and stuff that we all get off of amazon and stuff and after like a windows update but the last time i just bit the bullet again and said forget it and that's what i got so we are all set and ready to go everything is parked back at home we're polar aligned all that good stuff i have tested that we have uh focusing working that filters are changing i always like to just kind of like do a little bit of testing plate solving make sure everything works before we get started for the evening um, go ahead and just take a 10 second exposure here real quick um, it's going to switch the filter to the alien so of course it's probably going to be out of focus but just to make sure that we're pointing back at polaris because i do not have my security camera on there so that's okay we'll let this image come through here real quick and yeah definitely not in focus but not too far off so we're pretty much ready to go for the evening I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the IDIS RGB filter and we should be set and ready to go. So we'll go ahead and just hit play on the sequence over here and it's going to start up my Robocopy. So it backs everything up to my network drive and on the mini PC as well. So all of my images, flats and everything will be just waiting for me in the morning. I don't have to do anything at all. So this baby's just going to run now, hopefully all night long. And we will see you guys right back here when that is all done. And we're in a different shirt, hopefully. Here we are the next day and we were able to get about another four hours of data on the veil. Now I did accidentally mess up my sequence. I started one one minute earlier than the other. So I didn't get to capture my RGB stars, but here is the veil here. And man, it's just so nice to have this big target. Maybe we can do a processing video or something about it. I am going to put a link to this uh, master uh, below so you guys can get it and play with it if you don't have something like a red cat or whatever you know it's really nice pretty good quality data you can see how well the antlia filter like kind of stacks up with everything uh, again just great that I wake up in the morning and all my flats dark flats and everything are just there waiting for me because the automation that we've built into it with that deep sky with that deep space dad Flat panel, just cannot say enough about that. And also the rotator as well, because I did accidentally shift to a different target playing around and I was able to like come right back in, get the rotation that I wanted to get to and automatically just, you know, line everything up. So this is a good, awesome, bright target to practice a lot of things on Pics and Sight, Photoshop and stuff that I want to play around with. It's going to allow me to practice proper coloring. It's going to allow me to play a little bit with GH uh, stretching. And it's also a really good target to play with, with sharpening as well and playing around with that and pushing different things with sampling because I am totally over uh, sampled with this. I drizzled the data at uh, two times and you can see that uh, drizzling the data at two times, I usually just do one, but drizzling this at two times uh, definitely gave me a lot better and more rounded stars, that is for sure. But there's a lot of stuff in here. Maybe at some point I would like to put a little bit more time in on it. Not sure how much I will end up getting, but I'm just going to kind of scan through the image here when I get done making the video and looking at everything. Of course, I pulled the stars out and 
tried to color correct those using the SPCC and the built-in filter selections as much as I could and add some color back into the stars. And, you know, I think that's something that a lot of people have been focusing on recently is uh, not getting rid of their stars and dimming them down as much. Now, these pixel values here are pretty much close to blown out. So I did not do a very good job as far as stretching this. This was just a five minute, 10 minute process just to get something out there uh, for the video. So I will let you guys just go ahead and have ham all at this as you want. So again, script in the description below, you'll see the link to the Google Drive and this master will be there waiting for you. So that's it guys. It's great to finally be making another astronomy video and I appreciate all the support. We will see you guys soon. Peace.